the 10th chapter of John. This is a journey that we're on. We're growing day by day. There's a lot of married couples in this house. And even for the married couples, they could tell you themselves that it's a place where they grow. Right? It is growing, right? Hallelujah. Brother Clifton, you are growing, right? Hallelujah. Well, in our journey, we are also growing with God. We're learning to know more about him. I mean, after all, you do want to know the person that gave you eternal life, right? Don't you want to know something about him? And don't you know your, something about your husband? Does, Brother Cliff, don't you know something about Anya? Uh-uh. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm going to just tell you that uh, um, in my journey, it, it's just been wonderful because I'm at a place where I just want more of him. And it takes a daily walk. It takes us making that choice to follow him, just as the disciples followed him. Amen. And they learned about Jesus, and he told them. He says, no one will snatch you from me. No one is going to snatch us from him. If we say it together. Uh-uh, let me hear it with your outside voice. I didn't hear it. Stay in. And staying in takes doing some things to stay in. Well, you first got to get in if you want some intimacy, right? Brother Cliff, you had to learn about Anya. You had to know. Anya, you had to learn about Brother Clifton and some things you need to write off or whatever. But you had to get in. So they got in. Now they're going to stay in. And today we're just going to go over some things that can help us stay in because after all, he is our father, right? Amen. So let's turn to the Gospel of John chapter 10. Let me just wet my lips a little bit. Okay, we're going to look at verse 25. Everybody there? Okay. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Now he's talking to the Jewish people. As I said to you, my sheep, hear my voice, and I know them. He knows us, saints. And they follow me, and so we follow him. He knows us. He knows the very hairs on our head. He know our going and coming. He know our thoughts and intent. He knows us. So why wouldn't we want to know him? After all, we're his sheep. Sheep rely on the shepherd. He is the good shepherd. But he's talking to the Jews, the people that don't want to believe. So we need to believe in his word. And we need to carry that through on our everyday walk. Even when the circumstances don't look good, even if the outcome is not good, we will still believe. And we will hear his voice and we will obey the word of the Lord. Amen? This is something that we must do. We, it's no options. Amen. Say amen. amen. I and my Father are one. Jesus knew that he came from the Father and that he was going back. He had a oneness with his Father. He knew his Father. He kept in close relationship with his Father. He walked. He prayed. He stayed in communion, constant communion with his father. Then we should do the same. Amen. Part of our walk every day, we are to believe. We are to walk in his likeness. After all, he has poured himself in us, right? 
He's poured himself, his attributes in us so that we can go and show the world God. To give glory to God. He gets the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we are to hear his voice and we are to obey. The Bible says that if you love me, you will obey my commandments. That's not optional. It's not optional. The disciples followed him all the way through. And we are to follow him and obey his voice and his commandments. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 17. And God was pleased with Jesus. Is he pleased with us? Do we put him on the back burner, on the back eye, instead of the front? Do we put him down on the 10 list instead of the first priority list? Is he priority in our lives, or is he just sometimes? Do we give him 100% or just 20%, or when we feel good? Ask yourself that. John 17. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. Let's look at verse 3. Let's read this together. Are we there? The Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Amen. We have to know him. It's just like Anya knows her husband. Uh, uh, what's your name? <laughs> I, I lost your name, just Brother Clifton. <laughs> Brother Clifton knows Anya. I mean, it's something that when they're together, there's a connection. Do we have a connection with God? When people see us, do they say, oh, there she is, cussing up a storm again, inebriated? Up in the clubs, bopping and going. Oh, I seen her. People are looking. They're watching us. But most of all, God is watching us. Are we showing this picture of godliness? Because the Holy Spirit enables us to have this godly lifestyle. Works in us, right? He said he's given us all, all, everything that pertains to godliness, his divine power that worketh in us through the work of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the Holy Spirit's ministry to convict us, convict people of, of their sins. Hopefully they can get in. That's what the Holy Spirit is, one of, one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit, to convict sinners. Praise God, because I'll be asking them to get convict. Convict them. Let them see their waves. Praise God. Whew. They share the oneness. They share the same purpose, plan, and power. And we are to share the same thing because we are one with him. He says that we are his sheep. And no one is going to snatch us from him. I love that. Praise God. He is good all the time. Mm -mm -mm. Let's turn to the Gospel of John. We're going to stay in John a little bit. Well, one more verse. Chapter 6, the Gospel of John. So, in our intimacy with God, we're going to hear his voice. We're going to obey. We're going to believe. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, 
but the will of him who sent me. Now, I want you to look at that. Because Jesus could have came down full of power and glory. He could have did his own thing. But he gave glory to God. He said, I didn't come to do my will. I come to do the will of the Father that sent me. Are we doing his will? Do we know what his will is? We're not going to know unless we don't be Sundayers. That means you just don't come to church on Sunday and then you don't do nothing else. It means coming to church on Sunday. It means coming to Bible class. It means being involved in prayer, your prayer groups, your private prayer. It involves being intimate with God. Just as you uh, uh, married couples are intimate with your wives, and I'm not talking about sexual, but that is a part of it. But I'm talking about having a close relationship where you can sit and discuss things that pertain to your life together as one. That he, Marquise is concerned about Alanda's well being. Alanda is concerned about Marquis's well being, patting her on the back. Yeah, yeah, I love you, darling. Oh, man, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to tell you that one day I, I seen uh, Sister Toya come in and she just gave Pastor Noel a kiss on his lips. I'm like, whoa, that was. I mean, how wonderful is that? How wonderful that this connection, they're connected. She cares about him, and he cares about her. Anya cares about Clifton. Clifton cares about Anya. One day, we were, we were at a church, and we were coming out of the parking lot, and Pastor Cock just grabbed Pastor Cynthia's hand, and they were just walking in the parking lot. I was like, oh, that's okay. So cute. But do, but do you see what I'm trying to get? Do you see the oneness, the closeness? This is what Jesus died on the cross to give us, a oneness with him. But we got to first get in, and then we have to stay in. And it's all about being obedient. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. I mean, we're all wanting this unconditional relationship with people that care about us, but we're not going to get it in man. We got to first start with God. You start with God, then you will be able to build a relationship with man. You got to know God first. He comes first. He would teach you how to love. He would teach you how to honor your wife. He would teach you how to be respectful. Glory to God. Jesus had a oneness with his father, and he came here and he glorified his father by doing the will of his father. He took instructions from his father, and he prayed a lot. So that's the next one. Prayer is important. Prayer is an important part of being intimate with God. I mean, some of these Saturday prayers is kind of skimpy. Is this, is this how you treat Jesus? Because you ain't doing it for yourself. You need him. Oh, boy, you need him like never before. Because you can't do anything on your own. Matter of fact, the reason why you're here is because of him. Let's turn to the Gospel of Luke, and we're just going to skim through Luke and just see what Jesus did. Okay, so we're going to turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 21. Now, this was during uh, when Jesus was about to launch his public ministry, and he was being baptized. But I want you to see, here you see the whole Trinity right at this time. And I want you to see how 
the heavens open and God spoke and he was very pleased with his son. So let's start at verse 21. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he, what? Ah. So Jesus prayed at his baptism. Are we praying for our ministries? Are we praying for our spouses? Are we praying for our children? Are we praying to God if we need a house? Are we praying what direction you want me to go in? Or maybe it's not for us right now. now I'm going to just tell you this little short story that my brother had got out of prison and he was living with me. Plus I had a whole other household living with me. And I had, and Pastor No even asked, how you pack all them people up in your house? I said, they, they there. <laughs> so I started looking for houses. Alonda was my realtor. Every house that we went to, a no-go. So I said, Lord, do you want me to have a house? Mm -mm. Them people needed to get out. People need to move. How am I going to leave a house that's already paid for? I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you see the importance of prayer? Prayer is important. We have to pray for everything. You got a hangnail. Pray. Lord, what you want me to do with this hangnail? Pray. Prayer is important. We may not feel like it. I get it. I get it. We work. I work too. I get it. I got things I have to do. I get it. But prayer is important and we need it. Ooh, glory to God. But look what, look what God says. And the Holy Spirit, that's verse 22, Descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him. That's the Holy Spirit. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Is he saying that about us? Is he pleased with our lifestyle? Is he pleased what we're doing and thinking? Because he knows exactly what we're thinking. And some of us may have some stinking thinking like Joyce Meyer says. Is he pleased when you're in praise and worship and you got your iPhone scrolling through your Instagram account? <laughs> or are you like this? We need him. But as soon as we get an eight, God, I need prayer. But is he just 20% of your time or does he consume 100%? Let's turn to, stay in Luke, turn to chapter five. I'm going to show you where Jesus prayed. As the multitude was coming to hear him and wanted to be healed, Jesus withdrew and prayed. He needed direction from God. Sometimes we need direction. Don't go to man. Don't go to your horoscope. Go to God. 516, chapter 5, verse 16. Let's read that together. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and he prayed. This is Jesus. Turn to chapter 6, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. 
This was before choosing the most crucial thing in his life, choosing the disciples. He prayed all night. We can't even get five minutes. Five minutes? You want me to pray for five minutes? What about two and a half? Let's turn to chapter 9, verse 18. This was after he fed the 5,000. Jesus needed direction, and he got it from his father. Chapter 9, verse 18. And it happened as he was alone, what? Praying that his disciples joined him. And he asked them, saying, who do the crowds say that I am? Now, if you look at that, he prayed first, and then he asked his disciples a question. He got direction from the Father. But do we wait to get direction? Well, God, what do you want me to do? Well, I'm going to do it myself. We have to wait on the Lord. We have to wait on him to give us a response. It may take more than a day. It may take some time that we have to just get rid of all the distractions and sit before him and just wait. But time is, whew. Stay in chapter 9 and go to verse 28. This was during the transfiguration. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James, went up to the mountain to what? Pray. This was continuous commune with his father. And this is what we have to do. As believers... We are to commune with our Father on a daily basis. This is, a, this is an eternal walk. It's just not Sundayers, but it's a continuous, eternal walk with the Father. And it pleases him. The Apostle Paul prayed for the believers. He says, fill them with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual understanding that we will walk worthy before him pleasing him at all time being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of him how many of you know that we need to increase in the knowledge of him we need to know what god wants for our lives pastor noel says this every sunday God has an amazing plan for your life. He's fashioned your days. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says he's here to give you a future and hope. That doesn't sound like some doom gloom thing. We are blessed and highly favored. The favor of God is on us every day. His mercies are renewed daily. Do we believe it? And do we trust in him? Do we trust him when things are uncertain? Let's go stay in Luke chapter 22. And we're going to go to verse 32. You're there? 22. Verse 32, but I have prayed for you. He, here he's playing for the backsliding Peter. Now listen to this. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers. Do we strengthen our brothers when they're weak? 
Do we encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ? Do we give them a call and say, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? You want to talk about it? You want to go out for lunch? Do we strengthen one another when we need it? How many of you know that we get weak? God is the source of our strength. We encourage one another with the word. Not jibble-jabble, but we encourage one another with the word. This is what the word says. And the word is active and alive. And it's alive in each and every one of us. We're not robots. Glory to God. Stay in chapter 2, the Garden of Gethsemane, and go to verse 41. You there? And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and what? Saying, Father, if, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and did what? Strengthen him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. So if Jesus prayed more earnestly, fervent prayers, then we should pray more earnestly, fervent prayers. Amen? Because sometimes we need it. Sometimes even Christians go through situations where we need to pray fervently. I, I, need, a, I need an answer quick on this one. So I just wanted to show you that in Jesus' life and part of his intimacy with his father was prayer and part of our intimacy with our father is prayer. Amen. They all say it. Amen. Another one is worship. Worship is awesome. It draws us together. We're in the presence of God, and we're giving him adoration of praise. We're giving him the praise from the fruit of our lips. We're telling God how much we love him, how much we adore him, and we want him to be pleased with our worship. But when we come to him, we can't come all raggly. Yeah. <laughs> he says he is seeking for the worshipers, the true worshipers. Let me see the hands of the true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and truth. Where are the true worshipers? You need to be all in first. You need to be reborn. Then you need to come to him genuine, authentic, pure, holy. Because he's a holy God. And he desires, he is seeking worshipers that will worship him in spirit and truth. That word worship means proskino in the Hebrew, which means to kiss, to bow down, lying prostrate. I mean, we are to be in the presence of God, all snot, everything else. Because if we don't care about what you Hey, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care what you say about me. I need Jesus. I need more of him in my life. I need him. Do you need him? And if you need him, worship is a way of becoming intimate with God. Turn to Revelations 4. And let's go to eight. We're there. 
The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, listen to this, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they do what? Worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. We were created to worship. So when you sit out there and you don't open your mouth and you put your hands together, just remember, God sees you. And ask yourself, is he pleased with your action? But then you go right on out and you gather the football team together with, with, the, with, with everything and have a great time. We were created to worship. Worship is what we do. Praise is what we do. Let's turn to Psalms 89. Psalms 89. Oh, when I was preparing for this, I'm like, Lord Jesus, you are too good. I said, I'm sorry for treating you any other way but giving you honor and glory. See, what's happened now that people do not fear God. You know why? Look at what they do. They say anything, they do anything, and they don't care. There's no referential fear of God. There's no standing in awe of him. We have to stand before him and fear God, not a scary fear, but to revere him, to give honor to his name, to give glory to his name, to walk with respect, integrity, upright. That's who we are. We are believers. People are watching us. What do they see? What are they saying? Now, I think I told you some time back that there was a young lady who worked in the office when I was director of a home care, and she was a cursor. And I mean, she cussed. I mean, she really cussed. And she drank and she smoked. She had an aortic aneurysm. She was airlifted to U of M. They worked on her 24 hours and when she came back out, she did the same thing. She died yesterday. Sixty years old. We need him. He doesn't need us. He's God. He's got everything. But we need him, and we have to fear him. Turn to Psalms 89, and let's look at 7-9. Are we there? God is greatly to be feared in, all, in the assembly of the saints. That's us. That's us. And to be held in reverence by all those around him. Amen. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you. O oh Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When the waves rise, you steal them. That's the almighty God, El Shaddai. 
That's the most high God, El Elyon. He's the most high. He rules and reigns on this earth and in heaven. He is the one that rules. We bow down to the king. Amen. We are subject to him. We are to submit ourselves to him. We are to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to look at one person, Noah. Let's turn to Genesis. Noah was a great man. Noah's faith in building the ark was evidence of his trust in the word. Let's look at Genesis 6. The Bible says that Noah was the only follower of God in his generation. Okay, we're in chapter 6. All righty. Let's look at 8 and 9. And we're going to look at a few verses, starting at 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That means he found favor. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah did what? Walked with God. Verse 13, And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with a pitch. Now let's drop down to verse 22 and let's read that together. You ready? Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. And this is what we have to do. Whatever God tells us to do, do it. Chapter 7, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and your household, because I have seen that you are what? Righteous before me in this generation. Let's read verse 5 together. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. He was obedient. And because of his obedience, we are here. Amen? Amen. Did that mean that Noah was a sinless man? No. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory. But the Bible says he was just and he was obedient. And that's how we have to be, obedient. That is a crucial part of being intimate with God is that we have to follow instructions. Follow what he tells us to do. Amen? Okay, so now we have believing, right? Being obedient. Worshiping, prayer, walking with God, and first of all, we need to be born-again Christians, right? And walking, having intimacy with God. But now here comes the kicker. There are distractions that keep us from being intimate with God. So we're going to look at those distractions, okay? We're going to look at a story. Let's turn to Luke 10. And we're about to sum it up here. Luke 10. This is my favorite uh, verse here in Luke 10 that talks about Mary and Martha. Jesus has spent a lot of time with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And uh, just like in a marriage, you spend time with one another. You spend time with people you love, right? Right? That's how you get to know them. Amen? 
but we don't want to neglect God for service. Sometimes even as Christians, we can get bombarded with a lot of service, and then we don't have time to spend time in the presence of the Lord. How many of you know that spending time in the presence of the Lord should be first? And some things we may not need to participate in or be in if we can't spend time in the Lord because we need to be girded up in all that we do, right? Amen. So let's read. We're in chapter 10. Let's look at verse 38. Now it happened as they went, he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and did what? Heard his word. Verse 40. But Martha, say but Martha, was distracted with much serving. Now, I want to stop right there. Service is good. God created us to do good works. But it should not take precedent over being in the presence of the Lord and your private time and your time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has have left me to serve alone? Now, here she wants Jesus to rebuke the sister. Therefore, tell her to help me. Now, this is what she's telling Jesus. And look what Jesus says. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen. That's the key word. She chose to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear what he had to say. Do we choose to come to church on Sundays and listen to the word? Do we choose to come to Bible class to listen to the word? Do we choose to come home every day no matter what and sit and read the Bible to see what God has for us? Do we choose or do we go and get distracted with cooking? I'm going to tell you, I used to be a cooker. I used to cook big meals, like I'm feeding a ship. I take food over to pass the cot, so I take food and cook for Clifton. <laughs> but I don't, I don't do that cooking no more. I buy some TV dinners, whip up some little mashed potatoes, and say, dinner served. Because I need more of Jesus. I need to get in my room, shut the door, and it's just the Bible and me and God, the Word. We have to choose to do it. Listen to what Jesus said. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen. That good part, which will not be taken away from her. Praise God. Woo. It pleased God. It pleased Jesus that Mary decided to sit, and she was the same one that anointed his with the oil, with the alabaster. She knew what worship meant, to sit at his feet. So what are those distractors? I, I, I had a little red thing with the stop sign. When you see those distractors coming, you put up that red light, and you just say, uh-uh, not today. Those distractors are TV. And I know it is because I used to be a law and order and a Western. Matter of fact, Pat would have law and order on when I would come home from work. Didn't you, Pat? 
And I would sit there all day and watch Law and Order. And I mean, I would be amazed. I'm like seeing the episodes 40, 50 times. I also like westerns, and I love me some Clint Eastwood. <laughs> and it's nothing wrong with watching TV, don't get me wrong, I'm not here to tell you uh, you ain't supposed to watch TV, but I'm saying designate time for God first, then you can watch you some TV. That phone, oh my goodness. My daughter sent me a picture of the boys and they all on. They can't even look up and say hi, Nana. On that phone. That phone has consumed people. It is, it's almost like a husband. Or a wife. I mean, you, you walk in people, let me tell you, that phone will get you in trouble. One day I went to pick my boys up from school and they got off on the school bus and I had the phone and I was reading it and ran right into the mirror, bam! The man said, you need to put your phone down. I'm like, yeah! I ran right into the mirror, what, that phone! Oh my goodness, there need to be some restrictions. Social media, Snapchat. I have grandkids, so they send me all this stuff. I see them on Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. That can consume a lot of your time because if by the time you look at that, it's like, oh yeah, you click that, you on a page, now you scrolling up and down. Your job. Some of us work two or three jobs. That can consume a lot of your time. Some of us are in school full time. Marion. I love you, Mary. <laughs> pride, pride, pride. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> you don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. You better give him glory. Lack of desire. You know, I, I love nature. I watch a lot of nature when I do watch it. I like the sloth. Are we sloth? <laughs> hey, I'm not here to condemn nobody because I'm in the same boat. This is a journey that we are all on and praise God that we are on it together. It's a journey, I love it, I'm excited. I mean, I'm just motivated. I'm super excited because I know. See, I, before I didn't know that Jesus loved me. But I know now that he loves me and that he's got an amazing plan for me and watch out for the evil enemy because he said that he would protect us. He's not going to take us up out of his world, but he said that he would protect us from the evil one. So I believe that. I said, oh, you better watch out because you don't know who I am. I'm a child of the most high God and I'm highly favored. The great one lives in me. Huh? So you better watch out. You can say whatever you want to say, but you better watch out. And this is how we use God's word. Put it, to, put it to active. It's active and it's alive in each and every one of us. We are all believers. So let us enjoy this journey. 
Let us not get consumed with the things of the world we already know. They're not his sheep. We pray for them. We pray that they can get in. Pray that the Holy Spirit will convict them. The spirit of conviction. Taking back the land is promised We will not forget